for centuries, there was harmony. Hello, my name is Aldo Bote, and in this video I'm going to give you my personal review of the movie, my personal highlights. There's been a few days since the release of Godzilla x Kong, and you know ya boy, I had to be there and watch the movie at first chance. Unless required to, I won't really go into depth of the plot of this movie. However, there will still be spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled about the movie, consider yourself warned. I highly recommend to watch a movie on the big screen, and after you've done it, then come back to this video. To not get lost in our conversations, here's the topics I will cover. I try my best to keep each topic short and summarized. The overall plot of this movie pretty much went as predicted. Kong encountered a big bad, he couldn't defeat them on his own and then had to recruit Godzilla for help. I will say that I didn't predict how Godzilla and Kong would get along, or at least not until the last moments before the movie came out. There were predictions that Mothra would be in this movie, however I am one of those guys that don't believe stuff until I see confirmation. After I saw the trailer confirming Mothra to be in this movie, it was pretty obvious just how or who was going to convince Godzilla to not attack Kong. As for the humans roles in the movie and their purpose to serve their plot, I feel like the only thing they really did in this movie was to showcase Godzilla's new abilities and to upgrade Kong with new gadgets. In other words, to showcase that both Godzilla and Kong had become stronger than the last movie. Oh, and also wake up Mothra. That also led to the discovery of an ancient human civilization within Hollow Earth, which would also make a bit of human drama within our main crew. But I don't really care too much about that. I watched the movie to see big monsters fight, not really to watch human drama. Speaking of monster battle, let's talk about Kong's fight in this movie. Kong's first conflict in this movie was at the beginning when he was getting chased by the Hollow Earth rat wolf thingy. He didn't really face them one on one, he kinda just led them into his trap that dwindled their numbers. I won't really say too much about it since it wasn't really a 1v1 fight, however it does display Kong's intellect. Kong's second quote unquote conflict were when he had a tug of war with Doug, and honestly, Kong got lucky that Doug only used 0.0001% of his power. Forget Godzilla, Doug is the real king of the monsters. Oh, and speaking of monsters in plural, Kong finally met more of his kind. First Zuko, and then he got jumped by a few others. Kong of course win this fight, and what I really appreciate about this fight is that even though that Kong might be emotional for finally seeing more of his kind after such a long time, that still doesn't change that if they try to kill him, he won't hesitate to kill them. Like, he's not your typical naive main character who just forgive and forget. Kong's fourth fight, we don't even see that on screen, however he does fight this giant hollow earth eel thingy, and he dispatches of it quite quickly. And then he eats it with Zuko, and we see the two apes bond a bit. I really love this about Kong, even though Zuko tried to have him killed, he is willing to share a meal with him, and even to adopt him even. It just goes to show that Kong is just a big ape with an even bigger heart. Oh and speaking about having hearts. Scarface definitely does not have a heart. From his introduction we see that he is nothing but a tyrant ruler, an oppressor, and this pisses off Kong and the two dukes it out. Now this is where things start to turn away from my predictions. I thought that Scarface would be this extremely difficult titan to beat. Kong did have a bit of a difficult time in the beginning of the fight due to Scarface's higher agility, but once Kong got used to his fighting style and closed the gap, Scarface got pummeled. Seeing that Scarface couldn't defeat Kong, he sticks Shimo on him, and of course Shimo defeats him rather quickly. Kong figures out that he can't defeat Scarface and his army and Shimo alone, so he goes to recruit Godzilla. Oh, and speaking of Godzilla, let's talk about Godzilla's fights. So Godzilla's first fight was against Scylla, and at first I was a bit confused. Last time we saw Scylla on screen was at the end of King of the Monsters, and at the time, Scylla bowed down. However, after reading what she did in the comic, it kinda makes sense. She was always a bit of a rebel, and I suppose Godzilla just got enough of her BS. Godzilla's second quote unquote fight was when he got attacked by human drones. Obviously these drones weren't really that much of a threat to Godzilla, but it did showcase Godzilla's atomic pulse. We have seen this pulse ability before in King of the Monsters, however this ability is something Godzilla can do even without his burning form so it was nice seeing it being showcased. 
Godzilla's third fight was when he fought Tiamat in the Arctic Ocean. I first learned about Tiamat from Goji Center, so I know what Tiamat is all about. And after reading the comic myself, I got really surprised on how close Tiamat got to actually defeating Godzilla. In the movie, however, Godzilla deals with Tiamat rather quickly. I don't know if this goes to show how much more powerful Godzilla has become, but I always liked Tiamat design and just Tiamat in general, so I was a bit sad to see Tiamat go. Godzilla's next opponent would be no other than Kong. And honestly, personally, I found their fight to be more comically and fun rather than intense. I mean, this entire fight was just Kong trying to communicate with Godzilla that there was a much bigger threat down in the Hollow Earth, but Godzilla just ignored any attempt of communication from Kong. If that wasn't bad enough, with the upgrades that Kong had received from the humans, he actually knocked Godzilla out cold for a few seconds. In the last movie, Godzilla received one of Kong's punches direct into the face and didn't even flinch, rather answered with an open hand slap. Even Adam Wingard talks about how much stronger Godzilla are over Kong. So can you imagine how pissed off Godzilla must have been? The guy whose ass you absolutely dominate actually knocks you out. No wonder he go apeshift after. If it wasn't for Godzilla's beautiful Asian girlfriend coming and slapping some sense into him, Kong's ass would have been fried. And yes, I am referring to Mothra. Which I will say, it was actually quite a beautiful scene between Godzilla and Mothra. Just looking at each other, just dreamy and Kong sitting on his ass over there, telling them to get a room. In any case, she convinced Godzilla to team up with Kong, and they travel back to Hollow Earth to face Scarface and Shimo. The first tag team battle were so much fun. For details I won't really go too deep into, but the gravity in Hollow Earth becomes all wonky, and we see a battle in the air. While Mothra and Suko faces off against the monkey army, Godzilla squares up with Shimo, and Kong faces off against Scarface. The fight overall was just absolutely fantastic, however there is one thing I'm a bit disappointed over. It is just the fact that we didn't see Godzilla flying using his breath. I mean, I understand it, but seriously, director, come on, you know what the fans want. In my opinion, Godzilla and Kong would eventually have won in the Hollow Earth, however that didn't seem to go as planned and they all fall through the vortex, leading back to the surface world. I absolutely love the final battle in Brazil. And I'd say it was only a matter of time before the combination of Godzilla and Kong would overpower and defeat Shimo and Scarface. The more I saw of Kong vs Scar King, it was apparent that Kong were absolutely stronger than Scarface. Scarface seemed to have higher agility and a bit more skill with weapons and tools, however it did seem that he didn't pack much behind his punches. As for Godzilla vs Shimo, I believe that Shimo may have had an edge in raw strength over Godzilla due to her bigger size. As for special abilities, I think Godzilla's atomic breath might be a bit more devastating than Shimo's frost breath. I mean, when Godzilla uses his atomic breath, anything that Ray touches disintegrates, burns up or explodes. Shimo's ability freezes her opponents, however it seems that it's mostly effective against opponents that are immobile, and even then the progress aren't that fast. Be that as it may, I'm not here to discuss who's stronger so I'm just gonna leave that for the comment section. If anything, I'm actually quite surprised over that in a fight to the death, both Kong and Godzilla didn't kill their opponent, or at least they didn't kill Shimo. They probably recognized Shimo to be a victim of Scarface and therefore spared her. Also, I really love Shimo's and Suko's faces when they watch as Godzilla disperse Shimo's clouds. Honestly, this movie had everything a Kaiju fan could want. Giant monster fight, Kaijus with emotions, with personalities, so they aren't typically as only mindless brute monsters. The list can go on, but summarized, I will say that I really enjoyed this movie. The only thing I will nitpick at is just that the music weren't all there, at least not for the scene for Mothra. I would love if they, you know, just threw some classic Mothra tunes in there, but you know what, I can accept it. As for what I expect for future projects, well, they heavily imply that there were a Godzilla that ate a star. And the Godzilla we know have yet to do anything that extraordinary. I mean, the closest thing he's gotten was, you know, taking in Mothra's dust and, you know, Mothra, because she shines like the sun, and the sun is a star. Yeah, I don't think they are referring to that. So who knows, maybe the next Godzilla villain will be Space Godzilla?